What's up, everyone? It's Zach again. So it's time to show you guys what I'll be throwing in the bag for 2024. Twenty twenty three. I think I posted in the bag and maybe one other video. I just got busy. I ended up moving jobs, all kinds of stuff. But I did get close to accomplishing a couple of my goals. So going into last year, a couple things that I wanted to do. Uh, the big one was I wanted to get to nine hundred rated because my problem previously was I'd play some rounds that would be like nine forty rated, and then I'd play some rounds that were like eight twenty rated. And uh, I got to eight ninety four at the end of. 2023 um i believe it's 892 and it went up to in january um but i also got my first two wins one was at a weird uh, a flex start and ma2 weird flex it was at uh yahula was run by the guys over at swanky disc golf and then my first real tournament win was at christmas under the canopies out at lula in ma3 so that's my first ever what i consider my first ever real win so starting back at the start of 2023, my first rating, 874. Um, and it was just about, okay, what can I do to get that up? I didn't play a ton of events, as you guys saw. But when I did play, I felt like I played pretty well. I was pretty consistently moving up. I had a little bit of a dip in May or in June, but then jumped to 890 and then 892, 894. And then this year, my goal, my sights, are set even higher. I want to get to 950. To do that, I'm going to have to play, obviously play better, but more importantly, I'm going to have to throw further. Right now, my max distance shot, I mean full flex, full flight, um, is about 400. But what I really need to get to is about 400 feet of um golf distance and maybe 450 max distance i feel like if i could do that that allowed me to compete in the tournaments that i want to be competing in at the ma1 level with all that being said those are my some of my goals i want to hit 450 max distance and i want to play uh 950 rated golf by the end of the year on a relatively consistent basis even if i don't hit 950 because of the way the rating system works uh, I want to be playing that kind of golf. Now we're moving to what's in the bag. So last year I was throwing a lot of small brands, small brands. Uh, I was throwing, uh, I was throwing a lot of DGA. Um, later in the year, I ended up going back to some discraft. I had some prodigy in the bag, but early in the year I was throwing a lot of DGA. I was throwing some thought space. I was throwing legacy. Um, so a lot of legacy plastic. One of my favorite fairways of all time was, uh, the Patriot from legacy. So this year I've done something completely different. And what I've done is I have signed with the Lone Star Ranger team. To me, it was, it, was a, it came down to a couple things. One big one is I just kept moving stuff in and out of the bag. It made it hard to play really consistent because I was just constantly throwing new discs in my bags, buying new discs and throwing new discs. And that's the other thing, buying new discs. Obviously, you got to spend a little bit of money when you join the Lone Star Ranger team. It's not like a, a you get a bunch of free discs or anything. But what you do do what you do get is a limited number of molds to choose from, and and basically, it's so I spend less money over the course of a year. Um, the bag I am building currently. Um, I'm pretty happy with. I'm going to talk about what I have in there right now. I have a box I'm going to open. So it's going to be an unboxing of my first order from Lone Star. All the discs in my bag currently I got from Doggone Good Disc Off in Beaufort, Georgia. So we're going to go over it right now. This is, so I'm going to start with, or the three that I was throwing before I signed with the Ranger team, uh, or the three discs I had in my bag before I signed with the Ranger team. So number one, they're a little dirty. I did some field work and I lost a disc. I'm going to talk about that disc in a little bit, but I lost a disc. Um, and as a disc, I really liked. So I don't exactly remember what I ordered <laughs> from Lone Star. These just are a little dirty, but I will be putting with 
Penny Putters. It's one of Lone Star's most popular molds. But uh, these things come out of my hand really fast. And they give me, they have a pretty good amount of glide. They're extremely flippy when I throw them, which makes them nice for like soft approaches that I just kind of need to go straight. Um, but I, I'm really liking these so far. Um, I feel comp. So with a lot of putters prior to this, I was feeling like I had to really, really rip them to get them the basket from like circle's edge. Whereas these, I feel like from 45 feet, I don't have to try that hard to get it to the basket. Um, now it's 45 feet flat ground, 45 feet uphill. It's a jump putt, like me giving a, a lot of effort into it. But these things are coming out of my hand real nice. I'm doing some putter form changes as well. I'm trying to putt more flat as opposed to being like a hyzer putter. So I'm trying to get the disc to come out more this way. It's going to be still slight hyzer, but it was like this before. Uh, but the penny putter um right now i don't have any plans about changing that anytime soon uh and then probably my favorite disc so far and i do mean favorite disc ever um and that is the lone star disc copperhead it's a 3402 um again you can see the the dirt and stuff on it from uh me throwing it earlier um 3402 it is Hard for me to describe how much I love this disc. So some people last year, I, I think it was on my, I think it was on my in the bag, but some people remember me throwing a jokery. And if I didn't have that on the, in the bag, then, then I was throwing the jokery a lot last year. I, I really do like that disc. The copperhead is the jokery. If you could forehand a jokery, I absolutely love this disc. On forehand, it's very straight and then fades at the end. On backhand, on a full power shot, it'll flip up a little bit and push straight. It doesn't really flip over that much for me. Um, I mean, I could turn it and it'll hold, but it doesn't really flip up and then ride. But it's very stable. It's a puddle top. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but it is a very, it's very puddle top. I'd like to see what it like a, I, I say a domey copperhead, but like, a little bit of a domey copperhead would do because I think I'd really like that disc as well. But this one I've been throwing for about a month and a half now, two months, because uh, it was in the bag before I signed with Lone Star. And I don't know if I've ever had a a more go-to approach disc than this because I, I love it for backhand hyzers. I love it for forehand hyzers, forehand approaches. Um, it's more workable than a zone. To me, it's what a pig wishes a pig was. Shout out to Robbie C. But Lone Star Disc Copperhead, absolutely love it. Um, and that, it, it was one of the main reasons I was like, well, I have, I put with Lone Star and I have an approach disc that I love. Why not just, you know, go all in, sign with the Ranger team? And so that's what I did. So that is disc number three. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to one that, uh, surprised me. And I mean, really surprised me. Um, I will be, it's, as of right now, there's nothing taking this out of my bag, but as of right now, I will be bagging a Dillo. Um, it's their artist stamp series. So one, two, zero, one. I thought I would hate this disc. Um, I don't normally like the thumb track. Obviously the copperhead, has the thumb track. So I was like, you know what? Let me give it a shot. Um, this is a V1 plastic, so it's their soft plastic. It's bendy. Um, it's like putter plastic. And this disc I is changed the way I think about backhand approaches. <laughs> I I absolutely love this disc. For me, right now, I throw it on highs, it'll flip up. It might turn a little bit, but then it just kind of flattens out and kind of drops. If I want to throw an Anheuser, it just kind of holds it the whole way. It doesn't want to roll or like get over. Um, if I throw it soft on Heiser, it's just going to hold that line. So it's just a really useful um, approach disc for me right now. Makes it a little bit easier to run like Anheuser forehands from like 70 feet out of the woods because I could just put it on it. I know it's going to hold. It's never going to dump over. Um, and maybe as this beats in that it will. Um, but right now it is extremely straight, uh, extremely reliable, and I'm I'm really digging the Dillo, which I never thought I would say. Um, 
I, I will say I have tried out this disc. Um, I am about 90% sure it's probably not going to make the bag, but it's got a cool stamp and it's glow. It's the glow penny putter. For me, it's just, it's the same issue I had with throwing a Luna is torque resistance is not this thing's friend. So like if I power up on it, it'll just flip and do kind of crazy things. And if I don't throw it hard enough, it just hyzers too quickly which I don't have that problem with either the Copperhead or the Dillo, which is why this is probably not making the bag. I have one. Um, I, I do like the way it feels. It feels like an ideal throwing putter, um, but it's just not working for me in the way I throw right now. So there you go. Penny putter currently in the bag, probably not going to end up in the bag, but there you go. And I do have some discs. I'm going to show you guys in a bit. If I, I think I already mentioned that, but in case I didn't, another disc I really like, and it's because I really, I really like flippy mids and flippy slow mids. And the reason I like flippy mids and flippy slow mids is because it doesn't require a lot of power to throw them flat, and they get a full, like a long turn out of it. They just hold Anheuser, um, and that it, that's what I'm getting out of the BB six. So it's another artist stamp BB six from infinite. Um, this one. Uh, so I am starting to get back in the love of the game. Okay. So these discs are inked and they're inked heavily. Um, this one I have deemed the bluebird. And the reason I've deemed it the bluebird is it is one of my best gap hitting discs in my bag because it requires so little power to throw it a pretty good amount of distance because it's so understable. It glides like crazy. I mean, I don't know if you can see how domey this thing is, but it's got a lot of dome to it. Um, prior to bagging the BB six, I was bagging a soul for me. The BB six is a little bit more stable than a soul, which I actually kind of like because it means I can give it a little bit more Anheuser and it'll hold it a little bit better instead of, you know, turning and dumping over. But the BB six right now, at least is staying in the bag. Do I have any other slow, slow discs? No, I don't. We're in the mid ranges. First mid range is the Walker. Um, this one also has a name, and that name is Peachy Clean. It's my ultimate gap hitting disc. Um, it's for me. It's like a, a it's it's a five five negative one one. There have never been more accurate flight numbers. You know, I've ever seen it is so straight and I do mean straight not like flippy or understable it is so straight um I like throwing it on a little bit of hyzer seeing it pop up push straight and then fade if I throw it flat it'll turn a little bit and then straighten out and land flat if I throw it on anheuser it'll hold that anheuser it is such a great mold um feels great in the hand um, it's, this is the number one gap hitting disc in my bag. I love the BB six for gap hitting, but if I need a little bit more power or if I want to power Anheuser through a line, I am going to stick with the Texas Ranger. Also an artist stamp series. It's really cool. You can't see on the camera, but it is like a, a like a creamy peach colored. Obviously the stamp is that peach colored, but I really, really like this disc and it is currently in the bag what i want to kind of do hopefully is end up cycling texas rangers get one really flippy one one that i hardly ever throw that is more overstable or more more stable and then a straight one that's kind of what i want to do this one has been i've been putting about three weeks into it i play a lot at little mulberry so i do hit trees um and this one's actually turning in to quite the straight boy when you first get them they come out as like very like straight and then fade hard to hold Anheuser. Well, not hard to hold Anheuser, but they'll try and fight out of it. And on Heiser, they just kind of pushing Heiser. But uh, this one's seasoning in quite nicely. I feel like in about two months, it'll be like extremely straight, if not flippy, if I keep playing courses like Little Mulberry, which is what we have in Georgia. And uh, But I really, really like this disc. Alrighty. Next up, a disc that I initially hated the first time I threw it, but it is going to make the bag now because this is another disc I feel like I could like get like three or four of these and season them in perfectly, and that is the MIDI. 
The MIDI is so good. It is, if you throw it hard and flat, it'll go dead straight and then fade. If you throw it on Anheuser, it'll hold Anheuser and then flatten out. If you throw it on Heiser, it's going to be a pushing Heiser. It doesn't want to dump until the very end of its flight. It doesn't want to get way left until after it's slowed down. Um, also, super good forehand disc. I was surprised by the torque resistance on the MIDI. Um, for my, my longer approaches where I don't want to try and overpower my copperhead, I'm using the MIDI a lot or I'm powering down on a fairway driver, but I do really like the MIDI for forehand. Um, great disc. For a disc comparison, my closest comparison would probably be the Quake, like a, the Proline Quake, but I... I really, really like the mini. This is also glow plastic. I think it's their glow alpha, but uh, really, really like this. I've been missing, missing plastic types. This is, this is an alpha. Um, this is in Bravo, which is a little bit more bendy and a little bit easier to beat in. Um, it's taken quite a beating. Um, the Dillo I mentioned, and then it was an alpha plastic copper head. I just wanted to go over the plastic types just so you guys understand when you're, if you order any of these yourself. So this is a, another glow, I believe this is glow alpha. So they have glow alpha, glow bravo, all that stuff. Um, beefy, but not justice beefy. This is a walker, which I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan, so I really, really love the stamp. This is a Walker from uh, Lone Star Disc. And the Walker, to me, it's a lot of people compare it to a Justice. I wouldn't compare it to a Justice. I would go more recluse. Um, it is overstable, but it is usable, usable over stability. Um, so, like, you can't, like, with a Justice, I feel like it's almost unusable over stability. You can throw, like, a knife angle like this, and it'll fight out. If I throw this on a knife angle, it'll try to work out, but it's going to pan longer. Um, but, it I mean, it's still for flex shots, because I don't love throwing on a lot of Anheuser, um, forehand or backhand. But this disc actually is not as overstable as I was expecting, which I actually appreciated. Um, because it'll push straighter longer. Uh, so really cool stamp. I believe this is another artist here stamp from Low Star Disc. Um, but really, really cool stamp. Really, really love this disc, the Walker from Lone Star Disc. Um, and again, that was Alpha Glow Plastic. I believe that is all the mid ranges. I'm going to go into the fairways where I lost one today. I'm going to start with Flippy. This disc um replace i always have a very understable fairway slot in my bag and the this is a glow alpha guadalupe and it's sick and i love it and it's amazing and it's very flippy when i picked it up i thought it was gonna fly more like a uh more like a passion but it's more understable than a passion i believe it's more it's slower as well which i actually i love because I, I need that super understable slot in my fairways. I didn't want to go up to like a tumbleweed, which is like a 10 speed, even though I understand that that's very flippy too. But this is extremely understable. If I throw it on a hyzer, it's going to get up and it's going to turn and it's just going to hold. Um, for those of you who do play in northern Georgia area, northern mid Georgia area, um, this is my disc that I throw on 16 at Mulberry and it has. Gotten me three or four birdies over the last couple weeks. Uh, I really, really like it. It is definitely making the bag. And uh, yeah, this is just a stock Lone Star Disc Stamp Glow Alpha Guadalupe. Really, really like it. Next up in the fairway category, we have one that I'm still undecided on. Um, not because it's a bad disc. I actually love it backhand but i just can't make it work forehand which is a little frustrating so this is the mockingbird from lone star disc cool little stamp nice little birdie there um the mockingbird is one of my favorite backhand discs to throw and one of my least favorite forehand discs to throw which is why it's probably going to make the bag because I love throwing this thing back in. If I, pop, I throw it on Heiser, it'll pop up the flag and go 
forever. If I throw it flat, it'll hit that Anheuser, but because of the dome on it, it doesn't want to move too far right. I mean, this thing is very domey, like super domey. I wonder if I got a flatter one, if they make a flatter one, if I could get it to be a forehand disc. Because one of the things I used to love doing, and I liked doing a lot with my open bag, is I'd get a slightly understable fairway and throw a flip up forehands with it. Um, just really struggling to figure this thing out forehand, but backhand, it's amazing. I believe it's a seven, five, negative two, one. Um, this is in alpha plastic and, uh, I, it is making the bag. I want to figure it out forehand. I'm going to keep working on it. Um, my next video will probably be field work session in a field instead of the woods where I lost a disc working on my form today. But that is the Mockingbird. Next up. Um, if I'm going to flip it on a stable, I lost a Glow Alpha Lariat today. Uh, it's still very fresh in my mind. Still very hard for me to take. So I'd appreciate, um, appreciate your condolences. But this is a, another dirty disc. But uh, it is the Dos Equis. Um from Lone Star Disc, 8-4, negative 2-1. I would probably say it's like an 8-4-0 or negative 1-2. I said negative 2-1. 8-4, negative 1-2. I'd say it's probably 8-4-0-2. It's pretty... It's not overstable. For me, it's like if I throw this on hyzer, it's going to stay on hyzer. It might flip up a touch, but it's never getting to flat. If I throw it flat, it might turn a touch, but then it's going to fade out the end. It's got a lot. It's got a lot of low speed stability. Um, so as this thing slows down and it's got a pretty decent dome to it, too. As this thing slows down, it is just wanting to go left, um, which is really useful for like flex shots and stuff. I really like this thing for forehands right now. It's my straight forehand. So if I throw it flat, it's just going to go straight. And then it's going to taper off at the very end, but it is mostly just going dead straight. And that's why I like this disc. Um, but that's the dust keys. I, again, I believe this is alpha right there. Next up. This is replacing uh, my overstable nine speed fairway. And it is an artist series mad cat glow alpha. Again, I got a lot of glow discs. Um, the mad cat is, I believe it's very, very close to like a, a not, I, I believe it's close to like a, a, a Raptor, not an overstable Raptor because there's different runs of Raptor, but like a straight Raptor, which is what I wanted. I don't like crazy overstable nine speeds. I like nine speeds that are workable in their overstability. And you're going to notice that quite a little bit. Um, but uh, uh, Glow Alpha Mad Cat, really sick stamp. It's got the cat there, you know, Jason. Pretty cool. Next up, I believe that's it for the fairways. Now we got distance drivers. Flippy is first. This thing is such a good roller disc. Um, and it's the growler. Um, I, I call it sunrise. Because I don't have to throw this thing hard for it to flip up, turn, big full ass. It's um, incredible. Um, and then if I throw it on a little bit of Anheuser at full power, it just gets to this angle and goes dead straight forever. Gets to here and just pushes on a roller angle. So I really, really like this disc. I am trying to figure out how to forehand this because, again, it'd be cool to be able to do like a big S forehand, um, which I don't have and I've never had. But I, I want to be good at that. Um, on soft forehands, this thing actually goes pretty far with almost no effort, but the second I try and add torque to it, it becomes hard to get the angle and the nose angle, or the hyzer and hyzer angle and the uh, nose angle down. So, so working on it, love this disc, sunrise. It's the bright light at the end of the tunnel. Next is my go-to distance driver, which is the curl. This is a glow alpha curl. Um, another great disc. Uh, for me, it's very, very straight. If I put it on hyzer, it might flip up a little bit, but I, I don't really get it to turn ever on hyzer. 
Um, it'll flip up close to flat, if not get to flat, depending on how well I throw it. Um, again, I am working on distance. So I imagine this might become more of a, a, a like a understable disc for me if I end up increasing disc speed. But for right now, it's my go-to distance driver. Very straight, which I like having straight distance drivers. Um, but uh, Glow Curl, really, really dig that disc. Finally, I've got the Overstable Boy. And the, don't let the numbers fool you. It's a 13.5, negative 2.2. That should say 13.5, negative 1.3. This thing is beef, and it's straight beef. Um... I've called it Mr. Stabby um, with a knife on there because this thing, I tell you what, again, it is very overstable, but it is usable in the fact that like when I throw it into a headwind, because of the design of the disc, it, it wants to be understable. It wants to throw, it wants to be thrown by someone with more arm speed than me. It wants to be understable, but I just don't have the power to do that. So when I throw it into a headwind, it'll go dead straight forever and then fade. It never gets over. It never does any of that stuff. I can throw it on big flexes and get decent distance, but it is my overstable distance driver, headwind beater. Um, also great forehand disc. I could throw this flat even with the touch of Annie and it just wants to go right. Um, so I'm still liking this disc and uh, I think um, this will be a pretty good staple on uh in my bag this year the bayonet video is getting long so i am actually going to do the unboxing on another video which will be coming up very soon but thank you guys for watching if you have any questions about any of the discs i have in my bag please let me know um if you think you can throw farther than me then uh, you probably can and uh we'll see you next time